Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Ray Cologne, serving a sentence of life without parole. I'm 48 years old. I've been incarcerated for 24 years. Uh, I support the life without parole bill because for three reasons. One being that people change. People change. I think that the change should be measured by against public safety by having a parole hearing. Uh, with the fact that people changing and, and having a parole hearing, there's no guarantee that everybody will get parole, so all lifers will not be released. Uh, the second reason is because of the cultural influence that lifers have. Many of the groups in here, such as the Harriet Tubman Project, Brave Unit, ACC, and uh, Project Youth and Second Thoughts are run by lifers. And what we do is we mentor other prisoners who have committed to behavioral change and make the environment safer for staff and incarcerated alike. The other thing is uh, hope. You know, the state and federal constitutions both acknowledge the, the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness, and inherent in that pursuit is hope. What would America be without hope? You know, what would this humanity be without hope? You know, for those things, for those three reasons, I think that, you know, I, I think of my personal story. I grew up in the Bronx. I had uh, parents that suffered from sub substance abuse disorders. It was the crack era. It was the 1980s. Uh, by the time I was 18 years old, I enlisted in the National Guard. However, because of a clerical error, I was not allowed to go to basic training. Two months later, I caught my first case. My brother uh, was injured in a car crash, uh, permanently disabled. Four years after that, I ended up charged with murder in 1999. And uh, I suffer from PTSD, but my incarceration is a testament to personal change, the cultural influence that I'm a part of, and the hope, hope in a hopeless environment, hope in, a, in an institution that doesn't provide a lot of hope. So I think that those are the three reasons that uh, this bill should definitely pass. I think that the last thing I would say is that, you know, when you think of the juvenile lifers, I don't know if any of the juvenile lifers who have, who have been paroled have committed any violent crimes. Um, and in the last 14 years, there's 74 first degree lifers who have overturned their conviction based on wrongful convictions. And I don't know of any of them who have committed uh, any violent crimes with that. So I thank you for your time and I'll end it there.